subsequent ruins with right. Barco on drums. Mm -hmm. It uh, it's a very good album. I, I listened to that last night and uh, as as I was preparing questions for the interview and it, I really like it. Very different from the other stuff you have done in the past. I haven't listened to everything you have done, but enough to give an idea of, of your or your music and technical stuff. It's a lot more um, you know progressive and uh, and it's it's very well done put together. How long does it take for you to end to end to have an idea? you know, call Marco and start engaging and then put some track going back and forth and, and eventually you guys are happy with it, whatever, eight tracks, ten tracks, and then, you know, you hire a master, somebody to remaster that and then put it out there. How, how many months it does take? Um, it depends on the record. That one took a little longer just because obviously yeah. it's uh, including Marco and then I had uh, Andy Vendette uh, master it and... Um, so there, there's a little bit more pieces to the puzzle. So that one took a little longer. But one of the things that's really kind of opened up a lot of this creativity too, I, I should say, is that I recently moved, I say recently, it's now been a couple of years, but I, I, I moved to a different neighborhood in Chicago. And I was walking around this neighborhood and saw a building that to me looked like a recording studio. And so I thought... Yeah. I think that's a recording studio in there and it's it is literally just like a, a, about a block and a half from my house and, and i walked past it a bunch of times and then i thought i'm gonna look that up because i think that's a recording studio and if it's not I, I'm, i'd be shocked if, if it wasn't because it's very nondescript on the outside and most as most studios are they don't advertise that they've got boatloads of gear inside there um but i did that i, I looked it up and i thought and found that it was a studio reached out to the person and since then, I've befriended him, and I am in there now two, three times a week recording. So that well, flexibility yeah. and that that real, um, it, it's just made it so easy. So if I have an idea that comes to me now, it's as easy as, well, obviously, i got to work around his schedule, but the next time he can get me in, I could be in and recording that idea. So yeah. I think that's really opened up a lot of this. So... When you say how long does it take it depends but i mean a lot from from inception to recording in some cases like too soon because I, I one of the things i'm doing right now is i'm going back and relearning all the things that i've recorded over the last year because in a lot of cases i've done exactly that i wrote it recorded it and then proceeded to forget about it because it was now you know i had the definitive version of it recorded um the only problem with that is that it just it doesn't sit long enough under my fingers to like make it be you know my own and in, in, ingrained in my memory so now i'm going yeah. back and relearning some of those things but it, i think that's really changed how i'm able to record so it's, it's called gravel road uh recording it's right around the corner from me and amory and i get together like i said once twice three times a week now and uh record whatever it is that i've got coming out of my mind so uh yeah. it's it's a pretty fast process now i would say because in in fact we i've always got multiple things going too that's the other thing because it's there and because it's so convenient um i always have like three different things happening at the same time and then just kind of when one finishes then then it's done and then so that marco album in particular though that was a little bit more of a time consuming process just because i intentionally went in there let, let's record this album now let's push everything off to the side let's make this one happen um marco sent his drums back incredibly quick so we were able to roll right after i had sent uh the initial uh war guitar track so we kind of moved through it fast but i would say it still took a long time just because of the, the depth of the, the the recording itself so but feel free to elaborate on elaborate on the meaning of uh, subsequent ruins. I think you have to do. I think it's related to how now we are slave to phones and computers and zooms and you know kids anymore don't read books. They don't go to the library. They're busy yeah. right next to each other and doing this or you know. I, I yeah. have a, a teenager, so I know how it's like. <laughs> Uh, I just I see it so much, and so yeah. I, I I always I, I knew I wanted to do something in that vein, but yeah. uh, what 
really kind of changed and gave me the idea was I had read uh, the story of um, the Pied Piper. And in reading that, I started really seeing a lot of correlations to what was happening in the story to what is happening with these tech companies and their basically like leading children away from their families and uh, taking them down this different path. So Ooh. it really, that was the, the starting point for it. So um, I had this idea, I kind of knew that's, that's where I wanted to go with it, but didn't have, you know, wanted to then flesh it out a little bit more. And that's when I started working with um, the artists that I've worked with and a few uh, previous releases uh, Haju Muller, and he take, took the art and created a, an idea where we were telling the story through a child's mind or tr through a child's perspective of how influenced they were by the the technology. So if you look in, the, and that's one of the reasons too, because I, I, I really wanted to make the CD in a world of digital downloads, a lot of people don't actually buy the CDs anymore because uh, they don't have to, but I wanted to create something that gave them something extra. So I, we worked on this uh, elaborate, I don't know if it's what I'm going to show you, I don't know to what extent you'll see it in the thing, but there's the CD, you open it up, yeah. and then inside of there is the booklet that is yeah. the cover book. And so this is the child's booklet. And if you look inside, Show you just a, some ideas. Um, it's they the artwork it, yeah. of the child. So yeah, as sure. you go through the artwork, you see it's kind of like a, think of it like a, a almost like a diary of a um, of a young child. So it's it's like childlike drawings, but you start to see the influence of like Mr. Screen and how Mr. Screen is becoming more important than mom and dad, and then how his friends gets get a phone and how cool his friend becomes for having the phone and then you slowly see this trans uh formation of the child's mind as uh, it gets a little bit more um absorbed into the technology and, and taken away by it so it, again it was this idea of the pied piper and so that's modern retelling of it with technology being the the idea of Pied Piper leading them away, um, but through the child's mind like that. And so then I created the music to kind of go along with that. And so like a soundtrack, which is what I typically do since I work in instrumental music, a lot of the stuff I do is always in my mind, it's a soundtrack to something, you know, the listener might not always understand or get what I'm meaning, but it's how I write music is I, I kind of visualize what's happening and then i write the music to accompany that visualization that i have so i did the same thing with this so this is telling that story so that's how the the, the writing process came to be and then the, and then I, like i said the the whole process why this one took longer is because it was a lot more elaborate we put a 12 page booklet together with all the artwork and that took some time and then so yeah and now we appreciate it. uh now we have AI on top of social media. So, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> changing time. And I don't know if, like anything else in life, right? It's pros and cons, right? It, you know, uh, you know, parents need to be on top of the stuff to for kids to do homework and not, you know, screen time before this is done or they need to help at home. And, but it, it, you know, with a phone, with a computer, it's nowadays it's, we have the world, I would, fingerprint with the, you know with the internet and so so forth so it's it's great because you know if you like music if you like this the way i do it's great to have access to discography biography listen go to spotify bad camp so it's bad if 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 you are many many hours through the day right so uh yeah it's, I mean it's who whose fault is it? i think uh, the parents you know i suppose some kids are more vulnerable than others because they, sometimes the parents are not present or broken family or whatever, but the, the, the parents need to be on top of it. And the kids need to know when to stop. And it's not easy, easy for me to say, but not a kid anymore, but right. right. So, but yeah. And I think that like anything in moderation and there's, you know, there's good to everything and there's bad to everything, I guess. 
one of the things that I've often explained, I do this a lot with Azure Acry as well, is like, I, I just don't find it very um, exciting to explore the the good in things. I think it's it's more captivating for me to explore the the evils or the downsides of things because you sure you could write an album about how happy technology has made easy it's made some of our lives but i don't know to me that just doesn't sound like much of a a, a topic it just sounds like um yeah it's it, it works but i always like exploring a little bit more of that darker side of things and so that's where like to me i i see the negative as well and i i specifically chose i want to take this negative side of of technology and explore that idea yeah i got you you mentioned ego id so you must be familiar with the work of sigmund freud and psychology and yeah yeah i love that kind of stuff i yeah. I, I do a lot of reading on that I, and i i don't have a degree in psychology i don't have any real connection to it but i i just later on in life i found a a, a lot of uh interest in that so i read a lot of books and i read a book recently about the how the uh, mind is changing from technology and how uh the brain is actually adapting to technology and things like that fascinate me so that's what kind of ends up coming into these uh album ideas yeah i i, I like the stuff but, you know off topic i uh, I'm going to Europe in a couple of days and um, to see some shows and talk to some musicians. I'm going to be visiting. I've been in the, the Sigmund Freud Museum in in uh, no, in in Vienna in Germany as well. But I'm going to be visiting the house of uh, Carl Gustav Jung. I don't know if you are familiar with the stuff in in Zurich. Uh, so I'm looking forward to. It. I'm like you. I I like. I, I'm an engineer by you know by trade. Right. I'm a computer consultant, but uh, there's, I'm always reading stuff. Always reading. I'm always listening to music. I do a lot of stuff. So my main, my brain, worked that way. I suppose you know. So I, uh, yeah. and um, but it's great to. I don't know. For my point of view, right? So for people complain about, um, uh, Spotify, right? So if you're a musician, you don't make any money there. You need to have, I don't know, a million hits to make you know, twenty dollars or whatever it happens to be. For me it's great because when I'm exploring music, I pay ten bucks a month. I'm always discovering, I'm always looking for new bands, for new you know, I put Jason Blake and from Jason take me to this, to that, to that, and I always create a playlist and listen to it. And uh this uh, but you know for a musician point of view it's terrible because they don't make any money. But but camp seems to be a lot you know it's fair, right? They only take I don't know, ten percent of the night the ninety percent go to the artist. So it's not yeah. the tool is not sophisticated as the you know Spotify of this world, but uh, still is it, you know it's kind of it's fair for the musician, that right? Yeah, especially like they have these Bandcamp Fridays and that definitely that yeah. even more goes to the artist. Um yeah. I, I had been reading about it for many years and, and all I can say is that uh, there's a lot of truth. It, where I make most of my money is, is at shows. When when I just sell and, and people still will buy CDs at shows. Yeah. Uh, I think that souvenir, I mean I do the same thing. I, I go to shows and still will buy a, a CD just because I, it, there's more of a connection to the artist at that point. I like going up and speaking to them. Um, yeah, signing, absolutely. Yeah sign the cd or whatever um but i i definitely think that that's that's where you know the merch and all that kind of thing that's where the money can still be made um mm. i think that yeah it's it, it's i i again I'm, I'm the same boat as you like as a listener i love spotify i listen you know i get turned on to all sorts of new things um as the artist i i don't know i see both sides of it because like you know, do, does do I make a lot of money off of it? No, not you know. I'm sure the people selling, you know, millions of records make decent amount of money. But I think everybody that's down a little further doesn't make much money. But on the other hand, it does, like you say, expose my music to a lot wider audience that it wouldn't. That's, that's right. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I I'm okay with that as long as, like I said, the the shows. As long as people still buy the CDs because that's where I do make more of the money. If that ever dries up, then I think that becomes. I got to 
figure out the next step or whatever wherever it could be possibly earned. Yeah, nowadays, you know, many, I mean, in my case, I buy a lot of music. I have a music relation and I see where I live over 50 shows a year or so. So I spend a lot of time and a lot of money in, and, uh, in music. My wife says that I have an expensive taste because <laughs> I go to expensive shows and stuff. But um, you know, nowadays, cars, you know, new cars don't come with CDs. So it's people, unfortunately, well, I, I don't know who, I, who am I to say, but unfortunately, from my point of view, people live in, you know, very, they, they are going fast, 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 right? They, they can download the stuff, play 10 seconds, I don't like it, play 10 seconds, I don't like it, okay, this track, I don't like it, and then, okay, so, um, you know, I, I, I have a big vinyl collection, so I sort of, sort of forced to listen to the whole album, and, you know, flip it upside down and listen to the other side and look at the picture. Uh, it's, I found that it's appealing to me, you know, as opposed to, you know, listen to just MP3 in the car and so sort of, you know, um, right. yeah, that, but uh, people, people nowadays still where I buy music and, uh, or Amazon or eBay or other places. And nowadays, people nowadays buy, uh, a lot of vinyl, vinyls you yeah. going up and up and up, and then CDs happen to be going down, down, down. Used to be the other way around. Now they flip, right? Right. right. Well, uh, and, and I, I, I think it depends too. Generational. I'm sure the younger kids mm -hmm. have no interest in this, but I still come from the generation where I actually like to grab the booklet, read inside of it, learn about the artist. You know, know who recorded it, who mastered yeah. it. I'm like those are the things that I still get interested mm -hmm. in. And the digital, you know, Spotify doesn't give you that information. So that's right. Yeah. No. I still like to own the CD just simply for that to kind of dig through it and, and learn more. So I'm hoping how many, that people yeah, still do that. Yeah. yeah. How many gigs you do like in a month? So, you know, now the summer is coming up and, and uh, uh, yeah, you have a lot of gigs. Yeah. It depends. Um, so I'm looking to book a lot this summer. I think uh, yeah. that'll um there's they're starting to come into um i would say i don't know one two a month um in the chicagoland yeah. area um yeah. and then starting to at least with the solo stuff branch out a little bit more um closer to me like i've played some shows in wisconsin i've played some shows in uh michigan um so kind of the midwest is what i've been concentrating on right now with the the solo stuff see the there's there's, there's the album you've heard the subsequent ruins that's a little heavier and so that's um that's the louder rock club venue but i also just play solo war guitar where um i i have like an acoustic version of the war guitar and so that could even be coffee shop type volume and so that i'm getting more gigs with because um I could play the same material, just like a toned down version of it. And then yeah. I add drums, it becomes a little bit more of a rock club thing. I just did a couple shows uh, doing the rock club thing, and I have more booked for the end of the year. But in the summertime, I'm, I'm going to try to do a little bit more of these quieter things. Um, it also corresponds to some new music that I have coming out uh, in the summer that is a little bit more uh, just acoustic me on the war guitar, no accompaniment. Yeah. So. Is your music the your only source of income in general, or or you uh, I'm a school teacher. another job? So, huh? I'm a school teacher. I teach uh, fourth oh. and fifth graders. Yeah, it, that's that's great, man. I it, it's difficult to make a living as a as a you know full time musician, right? So, uh, unless you are big big name is um, yeah. You know, I I you know I I have interviewed several people during the pandemic that. They didn't make it, and well, they decided to. Hey, no, no, go, can't it's the COVID? You know, I can no outside, I can no play. I better go to school. So they forgot the music and they left the music life behind, and they're doing other other activities nowadays. You know, so it's um, it's tough, I suppose. But that's that's the way it is sometimes. And um, what kind of music do you listen to now? Nothing to do with your music. We'll talk, what are your top five? bands or or artists that you listen to re recently uh, um recently let me think uh i 
I like uh, animals as leaders, progressive instrumental. I like that. <laughs> um, I, I've always liked Tool, so I always kind of come back to listening to Tool. Yeah. Um, and I've, like I said, I mentioned Jonas Hallberg. I'm always listening to Jonas Hallberg yeah. stuff. Um, let me think. Uh, I, I'm big into soundtracks, so whatever soundtrack is currently piquing my interest, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that. Uh, sometimes it's by composer, or sometimes it's just like I see a movie that, that I like the music to, and I listen to that. Um, and then ambient music, I'm always... I, so a lot of times too, I'm listening to the stuff, the other things on the label that I'm on. So I'm listening to some of the other artists on that. Uh, but yeah, I would say that's the the bulk of what I've been listening to lately. At least. Yeah. For in terms of soundtracks, uh, that big my interest because I have a big a big uh, you know soundtrack collection. So I what it's it kind of electronic music, uh, the Hans Zimmer, the John Williams type of the world, or more. Or the more scary movies or horror movies, that what kind of stuff here? Um, you don't it really depends, but um, I, I don't not necessarily horror movie soundtracks. Not to say that they're, they're not great, because um, I mean John Carpenter, I, I love some of the stuff that yeah, John Carpenter can, stuff yeah. is great. Um, but I, I would say, uh, let me think. Um, I don't know. It's it's a lot of times it's just based on particular m movies. Um, okay, but, yeah. But, you want to see an a movie? You you listen to the music yeah, in the background. Yeah. And say and, who is this guy, and you look it up and got it. right. Look him up, and and a lot of times it's not even somebody I've heard of, so it's not. Yeah. Um, I really like the I, that guy's now pretty famous, but um, I like the music from Game of Thrones. That's a, a more recent thing that I, I went back through and listened to every season of the, the music because I really like what that so stuff sounded like. Um, I mean, there's the famous guys that do it too that I like that stuff as well. The Hans Zimmer type of the Hans world. Zimmer, one. Yeah, the Hans Zimmer. Is a, yeah. I just, in yeah. fact, I just this last week listened to a, a live concert. It was Hans Zimmer in concert. And I, I believe I remember reading something about how um, Guthrie um, Govan was uh, the plays guitar with him in his live thing, and uh, he's with the Aristocrats, uh, plays with Marco and with the Aristocrats. And I, I so I went listening to that to hear if uh, that was in fact him on that. So um, yeah, I love that stuff as well too. That's great. I uh, I recently discovered um, the Seven D Media. Uh, yeah, that's you know, Trey Young. Yeah, I need to check it out because I, uh, when I was putting questions for this interview, I, I came across that, and um, this I need to listen to, you know, uh, people that are on that particular regular label of, of family musician, if you will, and because there's there's a lot of very good stuff there. Right? I just saw the name and say, oh, I know the guy, I know the guy, and so yeah. I need to put more time on that. Uh, there's some really cool things on, on, on his label. Yeah, I would definitely check it out. Um, go to yeah. the 7D, well, you can go to the 7D website, but then yeah. uh, the, the Bandcamp page Ooh. has a nice listing of how all the artists on there, and you can then listen to stuff from there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's some really cool stuff in there. Yeah. So what is, what is coming up for you? You say you are going to be touring in Chicago area uh, and then other places, and then a new album is coming up for you? Yes, so I have a an album just basically waiting to go. That's uh, a little more of a, a, a quiet album. Uh, yeah, me on the acoustic war, and um, so I'm going to put that on the summer, and then uh, I've been booking shows to to do that, and then come back in the fall with a little bit more of the heavy stuff again, because uh, I, I really want to just see what I can do with this acoustic thing over the summer. So uh, I've got like. I think already four of them booked and continue to do a little bit more of that. And then, like I said, I'll, I'll, I incorporate some of the subsequent Ruins material even into the, the more acoustic sets, but then I, I've been practicing with a drummer so that we can actually play the subsequent Ruins stuff uh, with, because I've been doing a lot of it solo. 
uh and so i want to actually play it as it is on the album with a drummer and so we've been practicing and we have some shows starting to come in uh fall i know the first one's in september or something like that good for you man feel free free to uh mention your your website your bank cam where people can buy your music and and so forth so all right uh so website is jason blake music yeah um That, that's a good place to go to then have uh, everything yeah. kind of links off of that. Um, Bandcamp is jasonblake.bandcamp.com. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think if you go to my website at Jason Blake Music, you can, all the links are right there on the top to get to everything else. Yeah. Plus, that's a, I, I actually still like updating my website and making my website really more of my ultimate hub and then sure i know a lot of people just check out what people do on social media and that's how they're yeah. so but i still like my website i still like doing things to it and, and updating it and whatever so kind of hope people go there first and then sure you can always go off to all the other stuff but i i yep. have to update that first and then the other things second absolutely and uh okay jason it was very nice talking to you good luck to you hopefully we'll We'll see one day in Chicago. I would love to listen to your music and we can maybe grab a beer or order a pizza or something. <laughs> That sounds great. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Take it easy. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye.